simplify our cloud adoption process, and at the same time, accelerate our cloud development cycles for the developers who are building their capabilities on the cloud, or were looking to build their capabilities on cloud. We'll also share some insights on how this, how Backstage helped us in reducing our workload time of the developers to build their capabilities on cloud, and also talk about the unifying experience that the developers were able to get because of the implementations that we did on Backstage for our specific use cases. Yeah, let's... Yeah, so there are two stories that we want to speak about uh, when it comes to cloud enablement. There were a lot of different pathways that the developers had to go through when they're looking to move to cloud within Booking. And over time, when we were simplifying this process for the teams, we wanted to make it easier for teams to come to cloud, be, be it from whichever uh, coding background you are, just make it simpler for teams to start using AWS or any other public cloud for that matter. And these are the two tales that we want to speak. So these were the two core narratives that we found with the adoption journey within Booking. And this is where we want to bring some more themes around these two specific areas. So cloud enablement. So for context, uh, I've, I joined Booking about close to two years ago as a senior technical program manager. And one of my key objectives was to modernize our cloud adoption process. Uh, at that time in Booking, uh, moving to cloud wasn't easy. Uh, we did not have an easy way to get into cloud. It was a heavy onboarding process. We had a lot of processes and frameworks to adhere to. And what that meant was that there were a lot of stakeholders that needed to be addressed. For a developer who's looking to build a service, or who's looking to move his application from on-prem to a cloud-native service, service provider, they had to go through a lot of steps, a lot of regulations to address. And that wasn't that straightforward because of the multiple stakeholders that we had. Booking being a large travel industry company, we were also security first, which meant that there were a lot of rigorous security and compliance regulations. So if you had a new service or something new that came up in the industry from any cloud provider or a new way of doing things, it would need to go through a certain rigorous process of validation within Booking.com by our internal teams before it gets opened up for every developer to basically use it. You can think of it from anything that AWS launches or any other cloud provider like GCP launches. If there's anything that needs to go in, it needs to go through our validation processes. We have security as our core pillar, and I guess when you're looking at cloud for that scale, you need those kind of validations as well. And not to forget the data governance bits, like GDPR regulations, you'll have SOX compliance. So if you are moving something about customer information on the cloud, you need to be mindful of how that journey looks like. So these were some of those problems that we were observing. And also in booking, we had a developer journeys, like there were many different use cases. There would be proof of concepts. We are always evolving. We are looking to be the first in market. So we are building on capabilities that perhaps are not there in the industry. So the developers needed that avenue to build it. It could be proof of concepts. It were working in isolation. And those are not some things that you would get on cloud by default, at least in booking. You need to go through a certain set of frameworks to make sure that that's all enabled. And lastly, we had to scale up. We had to find a way where we could do the same level of rigorous process when we went from a few, few projects a month to more than 100 projects a month moving to AWS or GCP or any other cloud provider for, for that matter. So this was our few of the problems. You see a few forms around. I was, we had a number, we had to remove it. But yeah, it was what it is. And, but before we talk about how Backstage helped us solve some of these problems, let's also discuss about how Backstage was being used at Booking.com back then, about two years ago. Honor, do you want to do the honors? Yes. So, um, hello, I'm Honor. 
Uh, I'm a software developer in Booking, and I've been with Booking for two years, I believe. We joined it roughly at the same time. So we jumped into the same problem, solving the same problem. Um, so our problems in cloud, uh, like uh, Bharat gave you some context of the scale or the things that we needed to solve. But how we solved it uh, was a bit of a question, like what are we going to use? And then we realized that we actually use, we, we actually have a backstage in booking. Um, well, it's called something different <laughs> than backstage uh, to start with. But a couple of things you might know, you, you might need to know about me uh, before I continue. I'm really bad at keeping uh, speaking notes, so I might off track, but I will try to keep it in 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 the uh, in the median. So I looked through our internal communications and meetings. Um, so. Um, and I could track this back to 2021. I believe there was a meeting uh, where we had a problem to solve in Booking. And that problem, I believe, is, will be familiar to a lot of people in here. We had a bunch of tools lying around, like in a bunch of places. They all had different UIs. They all had uh, different user experiences. Uh, they were integrated because they were all working it together, yes. But uh, from the user perspective, that's, that, that's the key point here. From the user perspective, they were not. Like for a user, for anyone in our uh, ecosystem to do something, they needed to visit a lot of tools, a lot of spaces uh, to, to actually continue. And uh, that, in that meeting, uh, that problem was being discussed. And in that meeting, booking, being booking, we like our own toolings, we discussed to have something like something called Shiva. And Shiva was a reliability platform. and. A lot of stuff, but the two key points that I could extract from those notes was there were two requirements. First, uniform UI and UX. And the second one is a plugin-based system to move forward. And you just fast forward a couple of meetings, a month maybe, and then you see that guy in the middle. Uh, by the way, that's how I imagine like the open source community, always having fun, having parties. So someone looked at the market, and so there's a backstage. Uh, there's this, skin, this thing called backstage, and said like, yeah, the two things align. It's a uniform UI and UX if you build it right, and uh, yeah, it, it has this plugin-based system. So why don't we use it? So this is, I believe, how the backstage was introduced in our ecosystem. But I'm looking at two people who know more than me uh, here. I hope I'm right, uh, but uh, I can back this up with documents. So. From here, uh, when we joined, we had the backstage up and running. Uh, we had the service directory, uh, our project management and dependency management system in place, and uh, implemented in book, uh, backstage as well. Um, and we had a bunch of other plugins that was like we had a red, uh, already available for us. But I also want to mention one thing that I would like to touch at the last slide as well. Uh, when I was preparing this presentation, I thought like, okay, how we use backstage to solve these problems, right? Like what we did with it. But also, in our story, it is <laughs> what we did to it as well. Because at this initial stage, it wasn't the backstage you know. We didn't have the software catalog and anything that comes with it. It was just the UI part, the app part, but we didn't have a backend that, su that, that was supporting it. But this is, I believe, the resilience or the, like, the simplicity of Backstage. It even works without having those core functionalities. At least it, it, it did work for us. And, and we had our like, way, I believe. I would like to mention that as well. So from that meeting onwards, we said, OK, we will be building plugins. We'll be extending the core functionalities we have. But the, there was a heavy emphasis on build your own, because we couldn't just get the open source plugins into it. With lack of, because of that lack of uh, core functionalities. If you come back to our two tails, this is where we joined, where we jumped the ship. So there's a backstage. There is no software catalog. There is nothing to support it. Uh, but we do have our own, own source directory, which is a really nice tool we have uh, in-house that replaced, kind of, uh, that provided the software catalog uh, uh, capabilities to us. And we had a bunch of plugins in there. So. On the one hand, we were dealing with the onboarding and the golden path. So we were identifying the processes, what we want to do, uh, what are the stakeholders who, want, who we want to be working with us. But on the other hand, we knew from the start, like with the scale, you, you, you can't just identify processes and just leave them manual. 
you need to just make them build in your systems, in your own environments. So for that one, this is, I don't know if you noticed, but I like drawing. Like these are from my own sketches. Uh, I like to sketch our own problems, the problems we face uh, in, in, in our working environment. So these are just a couple of them. But for each one of them, we identify the process, then we identify the stakeholder to work with. Like this, it can be security, it can be compliance, it can be deployments, whatever you want, to, whatever you can think about. Then let's say, OK, we want to solve this problem, but how to solve this problem? And then it was backstage, like, OK, we have the core project. We extended it. We called it a cloud project. We created a new layer on top of it. And then we reached out to these stakeholders and said, hey, we want you to build, build plugins. Like, this is, the, this is the best part of it. You can just extend our functionality. I don't want to go in there, I, I, or I don't want to get requirements from you and build on my own. You can just build it. And we will be composing these individual plugins or individual extensions in a narrative that we, we think will solve our, solve our problem. So this is the way we approached it. And right, it says composition of well-defined and bounded tools. And I believe that's at the core of the backstage. And we, it really helped us in our journey. Oh, yeah. OK. Yep. And yeah, these are some showcases for it. <laughs> yeah. By the way, these comic strips are not yet copyrighted, right? These can be taken if they want. Yeah. But yeah. So what we saw on those comics or on those themes were about some of the questions or some of the things that the developers had to go through. And our first iteration of what we build on Backstage is screenshots of these, uh, we used to call them plugins. So what our intention behind this was, how we can transfer, how we can translate the business requirements or the processes that a developer had to go through and transfer them or transform them into a process which is on backstage. And the teams can use it for their adoption journey, for their onboarding journey to cloud. So we had something called for self-service, which we used to call as build day one. What that meant was that the teams can come to the backstage portal. They could come on one of the widgets that you see here. And they could just click on one of the buttons, and they will get an account provisioned. In parallel to that, the intention was that all the other steps and all the other journeys that they had to traverse, which would be security, compliance, it would be around data governance. So all of those processes were translated into one or the other plugin on these screens. And the developer would have the flexibility to not just provision the account, but once they got the account, they could in parallel own the process themselves and go and process those requests to the relevant stakeholders that were involved. So the problems that we were referring to in the beginning of having too many stakeholders, having a complicated process of adoption, while making sure that we were doing everything that we need to do to be at the industry standard level that we are, it needed a process where it would be empowering the developers to actually own that journey by themselves. So. We also created a security narrative and a shared responsibility model for the teams. So once you get an account, once the developers were able to create the accounts, they could start or navigate through their journey to the other teams, which would be security compliance. What we did with Backstage was we also integrated this with something like ServiceNow. So the teams would be able to use Backstage to integrate their approvals and their process and journey to move to production and deploy their services on live systems using Backstage and then going through a specific plugin, which would then integrate with ServiceNow. And then they would be able to navigate their entire journey using that flow without needing a dedicated team that would guide them through those journeys. These are some of the plugins that we had. Honor, I think you have a few more that you want to run us through. Yeah, I have a few more. Like I actually had to cut down the list. <laughs> But I believe the gist of it is what we're trying to say. Like these are cloud-related problems, not specifically for Backstage. This is just Backstage was the platform we sold for it. So I was also thinking, like, why not any other platform? Like we could just build our own app. Like just put a React or Angular there. Just plug in your own systems, your authentication, and people will be able to do this. So. For that, I believe my, question, my answer was the, the culture that came with it. 
because like backstage is out there. It's maintained by a lot of people. I believe some of them are here as well. It just this sense of community, and we were able to replicate part of it in booking when we were talking about the backstage, because it just gives you the freedom. Um, I, I would say from planning, <laughs> because if you have something, if you think you can solve a problem, this ecosystem is really good for it. You can just start owning a plugin. Of course, there's a, a, like preconditions to it. Uh, but if you can justify your use case, you can just start building it. And from that, um, at every stage when we were building a plugin, and not just for cloud, I believe for backstage, we have a bunch of other more. Like the last thing I, I can think of is, what was it? Insights, uh, uh, where someone just plugged in the the tags from Jira in backstage uh, for for the things like, hey, help needed. Like there's this core library. I want this functionality on there. If you follow the normal procedures, it takes a long of, long time. But if you can just tag your Jira ticket with a certain backstage something, or be well, we call it B stage. We even changed the name. Uh, but if you can just tag it, there will be that. It will be visible in the backstage, and this just is one example of that freedom. Like somebody saw a problem and they wanted to solve it, and our approach to it, uh, that replication of the sense of community, actually allows us to build more and more. And every time, I, I, when I look at the re, uh, results, they're just better than we initially thought. Then that's that's a trend. Like at every time, I want to talk about the library, for example. That was like a huge problem for us. Uh, just because we had multiple uh, documentation sources. I believe that's also common <laughs> in our sector. We had docs.booking.com, which is like an in-house solution we have. Uh, we have Wiki Confluence. We have GitLab uh, readme files. Uh, we have Drive, for some reason. Um, and then somebody at a certain point said, hey, this is too much. I can't find anything I'm looking for. And then built search.booking.com on top of it. But the result is, uh, when you search for cloud, for example, in our use case, it just everything. Like any sketch that somebody wrote that includes cloud word in it, any team that onboarded two years ago and had different processes to follow, like everything all together. So we created a workforce around us saying, like, yeah, we will make documents better again. But um, that was search at booking.com, right? Like that, that was the initial thing that sold us. Um, then this group came up with, hey, I will build a pl plugin in this environment. I will own the process from end to end. And I will just maintain a manual index, which sounds awful. Like, hey, no, don't do it. Uh, how are you going to maintain the manual index? Um, but that solves the problem in a really simple manner. Uh, and if you keep track of the ownerships of those entries, then you can send like on a cadence, hey, is this still up, is, is this thing still up to date? And it was just like, yeah, they took that, they built it. It's a plugin now. It's working. It's good, and it just solved the problem. So these kind of stuff we were missing, uh, not we were missing. I think we would miss if we bought, for example, an off-the-shelf uh, system that needed certain things in place, that had certain ways of doing stuff. So with Backstage, just the flexibility, I guess, if that makes sense. OK. To, so to summarize, like what we mentioned in the beginning, like we had a problem to solve. We were looking at how we can leverage any tool, for that matter, to simplify our adoption requirements. And we had Backstage with us. And what, we, what you saw on the previous slides with those plugins and those screenshots, we internally refer to it like a portal. And all of those plugins and all those screens were like an amalgamation of the actual cloud journey for a developer who needs to build their services on, it, on any of the cloud providers. And also, not just build new services, but also migrate their existing workloads to, to an actual live production system. So, by using the capabilities of the UI of Backstage, just the UI at that point in time, we didn't have the software catalog and other capabilities, we were able to solve a very serious business problem for us, which was going on and on. So that gave us what it actually helped us with, that we were able to unify our user experience. We could get all the different stakeholders that were part of the cloud journey within Booking 
to actually follow the approach that Backstage does in terms of ensuring that everybody is working from a centralized place and making sure that we have one source of information. So those things helped us to en ensure that there was a more ex wider acceptance of how we want to do this journey to cloud. And Backstage was the first step for us to make sure that that worked. And from there, I think where we have bigger plans now. And honor, you wanna talk about yeah. them as well? Yeah, this is the fun part. Like, uh, I, I believe this speaks to the resilience and simplicity of this idea. Like, we used it without any of the core functionalities. Like, but it did survive. It did prove value, and we want more. And that, for that, I believe this year and the coming years, we will be introducing the software catalog. As I said, like, tools that we build internally, they're also good, like really good. So we don't want to replace them that often, because search directory is, works, and it, it does what it, what it needs to do. But we will be, I believe, in the first phase, in, we'll introduce a, sh so, a shadow software catalog. So we will map everything we have to the, uh, to the format or the, to the things that the backstage will accept in, in, in its core. And then from there, once we have the software catalog, we will have more at our disposal. Like We will be able to use majority of the uh, community-driven plugins, and we will be able to just absorb them in. Also, the, in the same uh, uh, sense, we'll be introducing the software templates. We have a huge bootstrap plug program running at the moment. Uh, idea is basically like this, uh, one of the core functionalities. Uh, we had a go at it uh, at our own terms, in our own terms. So we have a rough idea what we want to do, but we will be also introducing that to to backstage to serve our customers. And also, the search is really nice. We will be having the search as well. So uh, in our story, um, like this is a, uh, what, what, what is the category of this? Case study? So uh, we are talking about our own, own, our own experience, like how we used it, how, we, how it helped us. But also, like with its simplicity, it did survive us using it the way we did. Now we are going to use it in a proper manner. We will be, using, we will be introducing the core functionalities it needs to uh, fully expand. Yeah. OK. That was a story. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Is there any questions for that? Before I take the question, can I just do one quick shout out? So we have one person from our backstage team at Booking. We were trying to get three people for the talk. We couldn't get the, the approvals in place. So a big shout out to Simba, if you can just join us on the stage as well. And Gindra as well, please. Yay! Yay! We don't have one, we have team two. Team picture. Yeah, I, I like, actually love your journey. Uh, my question is, though, uh, in your ecosystem, because it seems uh, kind of similar to our case, uh, where you have multiple teams that provide through the backstage UI and the backstage core functionality uh, their own plugins, how you make sure that everything is uh, according to the standards? So I, I mean the code quality and also UI slash UX uh, quality. Uh, and what is your release model? So when you make a release of the whole backstage uh, instance that you provide, how you make sure that all, the, all those plugins actually come in line with the proper way and proper manner, properly tested and everything? Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> so um, to start with, um, like our motto was automate everything you can. Because like if you just leave it to the subjective, uh, interpretations, it, it's, it's really hard. So we have for the basic linting and the code uh, styles, we have like a sonar instance somewhere. So for, for that stuff, we have the automation. But on the other hand, we have two uh, stage approvals. So we say co plugin owners own their own code. So they do their uh, code reviews, they do their own. Uh, In their own repositories? No, we have a single okay. repository, yeah. So d we just have in the code owners, like this folder belongs to this these people. So after the initial approval, like because in there they will be testing their own functionality, and we don't know about what their functionality is. As a second stage, we have what we call backstage reviewers at the moment, and those are like, I believe, <laughs> <laughs> us uh, reviewing to uh, in in a more abstract level. Hey, this is in, is this in line? But the UX, you also asked about the UX. That's the hardest part because like that's really. 
what we seen as a trend was like when you want to, when you live at this outside VX, everybody who wants to show something, everybody who has a data, just starts building a plugin. So at the end, you have a bunch of plugins that are not really connected to each other. So now we have a new initiative called Engineering Portal. We are actually leveraging our time spent on this. So we have enough volume of plugins. Then we can just now, at this point, say, OK, we have this bunch. How, how does where the, where each plugin lands in the user journey. What are the user journeys to start with? So we have an initiative to align them. And at the end of that, one of the artifacts we want to have is uh, the UX guidelines. So up until now, we didn't have it, which has like pros and cons. Uh, it just enables, enables more flexibility and gives more freedom, which I was always uh, up for. But at certain point, I believe if you have enough volume, then uh, you can just look back, look at the examples, and continue on it. So following on that, uh, so from your perspective and your uh, experience, would you rather focus, if you would start again, would you rather focus again on allowing all the teams create the hoods of their own plugin, or would you rather advise to create some plugins that can be used by multiple teams? So uh, would, you, would you still go with the externalized development of plugins hosted by their, uh, created by the, uh, the specific teams? Or rather, would you like to create those functionalities for them inside of your own provided plugins as a platform owner? I, I would go as the way we did, like enable people to build stuff, because that's where you, you gain a lot. Like, uh, it's just different perspective, different opinions. But we did have one rule, I believe, that was if you build a plugin that should be used by entirety of the company. You, ju you, you just don't get to build the plugin for your own. So anything you build, it should uh, be usable uh, by other people. Yep. Any other questions? Oh, sorry. No. Hi. Uh, from your purpose perspective, when do you think we should start uh, thinking about migrating to backstage? I mean, what size is proper is suitable? I mean, do we need to, for example, have 100 microservices or 10 people of the team? Thanks. Uh, like my own personal answer to that is at a time where people start complaining, because uh, like how much is much? Uh, I've seen systems with like 20, 25 components, uh, like. I'm talking about the UX and system components were perfectly, and everybody was used to it. But again, in my own experience, you notice it because people start talking and start complaining. And at that point, I believe making the change then uh, also justifies itself. Um, and it, it doesn't feel like a push. And that is, I believe, what we had when we had initial discussions, like people were complaining, and then we took the action. No, I, I just wanted to add a little bit. As he said, like it's <laughs> we we started with backstage because it was uh, it was not only for the users; it was also for us that maintaining uh, many different services in one company is uh, also like time consuming. And uh, like as a, as a team, like in the beginning, our team only had like ownership over multiple services and the mul we had multiple UIs uh, that we needed to maintain. So that was the initial idea when we started thinking, what if we had all of them somewhere? Since all of these services, they are not like by their own, they also like uh, communicate with each other. So that, that's when we thought about, hey, what if all our internal tools in our department, they can be at one place. It would be a lot easier for us to maintain. It would be uh, a lot easier for users to find these tools, because sometimes people, they don't know that <laughs> there are some services that we have already in the company. So. Yeah, and I think it was more organic in that sense, like when we initially used Backstage, it wasn't like mandatory for anybody or nobody necessarily had to use it. So it was organic, like developers were just using it. And when we reached to a point where 
for cloud adoption, for instance, we started using capabilities to highlight those processes. It kind of garnered a more you know, unified response, like teams wanted to use Backstage because it gave them a more developer-centric experience. And that's how it progressed for us. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, we'll, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. We'll go to